The Green Ops Podcast is brought to you by F3 Tactical, Spotter Up, Sons of Liberty Gunworks, and Blue Force Gear. So yeah, it was like a Gen, what, three or something like that. Mm -hmm. Got got a bunch of mags, and it wasn't a big cost. I mean, for me back then, starting out in federal law enforcement, it was kind of, it was a cost that I needed to factor in, but sure. it wasn't crazy, five, six hundred bucks. And then, you know, I bought a thousand rounds on bulkammo.com or something like that. Oh, those were the days. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, it was like 200 bucks or something, 220. Oh, yeah, right? Now it's like 500. <laughs> and, and I went and shot a couple matches, and, you know, at, at first... I thought I was a good shooter. I was actually a really good shooter in the Marine Corps. I, I won a couple of awards. I was usually, you know, the ones helping other Marines out in an elite unit. We were all experts already, you know. So I thought I also got some more advanced training than most Marines in CQB and stuff like that. So a little bit more advanced shooting, especially with pistol, because mm -hmm. Marines don't shoot a lot of pistol. So I thought I was good. And I remember I got blown away um, by some of these shooters, and some were juniors. Right. And I'm like, these are there's a skill level to this, you know, you, you know what you know, or you, you know what you don't know. Right. So I was like, now my whole standards reset. I'm like, there's, there's a whole nother, there's another ability here. It's like discovering fire. Yeah. It's like you know? playing in a bear softball league and discovering the major leagues. Yeah. It's like, what, <laughs> <laughs> you know? Right. And, and so I was hooked by that. I, first at work from the dynamic that I had to get better. This, this is, this is a capability out there. I need to be better for myself, for my citizens, as well as I may have to address someone with these kind of capabilities, right? So, but then the competitive DNA came in my upbringing of being an athlete and stuff far past that. And really what that drove was a commitment. Right. So I, I got better. I became a better shooter. I felt like I, you know, I was one of the better shooters in my agency but then the competitive side switched. And what, when I say that my commitment changed to pretty much an everyday affair. Okay. Right. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of how I got into it. Um, you know, Quantico, I kind of consider Fredericksburg cause I shot more matches there in my home club, mm -hmm. but I have a special place in Quantico, um, for Quantico. Another thing is I met three people there that really helped me out at Quantico. So that's another special place. One of the first people I met was Dave Wampler. Mm -hmm. um, Dave Wampler is a GM shooter. Started had a started in race racing cars and mm -hmm. very very good at it. Um, you know, at a high level, um, kind of like USPSA GM level in racing. So he brought that DNA, but didn't have a lot of fundamentals in shooting. I had a lot of fundamentals, but I wasn't used to racing. Right. You know, everything we do in the Marine Corps is very methodical. I don't care if it takes an hour. If I lower the risk, you know, the vulnerability to myself, then I'll clear that room in an hour. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's not worth it. In USPSA, you got to drive the speed, right? So we complemented each other. I watched him push himself, and I watched myself. I'm like, I'm a little slow. And then I helped Dave, I think, with a little bit of fundamental side and, you know, getting the points. And we both started, and that was really cool. And the interesting part is Dave Wampler's dad – uh, it was my special agent in charge at the time. Okay. Uh, so it was a very cool connection we had there. And that's also, we started traveling everywhere. The other two people I met there were my first, one was my first shooting mentor, Ron Francisco. Mm -hmm. He was a firearm instructor for many years, now retired. And I asked him, I knew he was a high level shooter in USPSA. In fact, his wife is a world champion, right? Mm -hmm. So I said, what do I need to do? Because now I'm committed on the athletic side of this. I'm treating it like a sport, right? I, I want to see where I can go. Um, and the byproduct is I get better for work. Right. And he started telling me, you know, some of the DNA of some of the best shooters like JJ and Max, what they do and himself and Phil Strader and, uh, really helped me understand what kind of commitment I was going to need to, to reach a high level. Um, and it was pretty cool. You know, he's been by my side, uh, all this time. Um, you know, I, I trusted him too, because there are some things I've done in my training, uh, to not hinder my law enforcement side. So that's very fascinating. Sure. So there are some things that like, I won't do a scoop draw, um, uh, because I'm mm -hmm. not going to do that in law enforcement. But so those the, who don't know what is, what is, what do you mean by that? What so, that? yeah, so there's a lot of different ways people talk about scoop draw, but in, in a sense. Complete episode available on Apple podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcasting app. New Green Ops podcast episodes available every Thursday. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of the new content.